Uh, Mr. Shapiro, thank you so much for taking the time. It's good. it's good to be back in Johnstown with you. So several months ago, this is where you kicked off the general That's election right. campaign. You've been going across the Commonwealth. What do you, has anything changed from the, the time that you announced here that you've heard on the trail that's, you know, made this election any different? Well, first off, it was really important for me to launch my campaign right here in Johnstown. Um, this is a community that matters. And oftentimes it's been a community that's been forgotten in Harrisburg. We have a lot of communities and neighborhoods like that across Pennsylvania, and I want to be a champion for areas like this. Um, in terms of what's changed, I guess what's changed is we feel a, a real gathering storm here. Um, Republicans, Democrats, independents coming together, gathering together to support my candidacy, recognizing not only that my opponent is just extreme and dangerous and out of step with where most Pennsylvanians are, but that I'll be someone they can rely on to fight for communities like Johnstown, to stand up and deliver real results as I've done throughout my career. So I've been humbled by the support we've seen all across our communities, rural, urban, and suburban. Um, and with 22 days to go, I feel real good about where we are. Let's talk about a community like Johnstown and the economy. You know, we have, uh, you know, the way the economy is set up, a mill town, a steel mill town is probably not existent. It's not the same as what it used to be. And, and towns like this have, have felt the brunt of that. And now with high inflation, gas prices are back on the rise. People are feeling it in their wallets again. So how would you as governor try to address these issues? Well, first off, we need a governor who actually gives a damn about communities like this. I do. It's why I launched my campaign here, and it's why I've been back multiple times, and why I've tried to serve this community um, ably as their attorney general, delivering real resources from the opioid um, settlement that's bringing millions of dollars to this area to help battle the disease of addiction. And as governor, recognizing we've got to invest in areas like this. We're going to put real resources in the main streets across Pennsylvania, including right here in Johnstown. The main street is what is sort of the heart and soul of a community. And they've been hollowed out um, because there hasn't been real investment for a long time. We'll make that investment. And then spreading outside of that, we need to put real resources into our rural communities, into our schools for sure, but also into our hospitals to make sure rural hospitals remain open and to help our farmers and those who are engaged in, in the agricultural sector. We are gonna create a capital fund to help with that. So we're gonna put real resources into economic development. We're gonna give a damn about these communities. We're gonna focus on education and public safety, and we're gonna really step up and help the good people of Johnstown. And one of those things from economic development, uh, one of your plans is about the corporate tax rate, getting that down to 4% by 2025. I mean, I think if, if you're looking at this from a macro level, most Democrats probably wouldn't run on cutting a corporate tax rate. Right. So so how do you think- Why am I? Why, is that what you're saying? Why because you? I think I'm for common sense things that are gonna grow our economy. It's common sense to think that if we can reduce business taxes for some of our small businesses around here and invest more in workforce, I wanna raise the minimum wage, to $15 an hour. I want to invest in apprenticeship programs. I want to protect the union way of life. If we can do those things together. We can strengthen business, workforce, and we can grow our economy. It's common sense. And um, you're right to ask me, why as a Democrat would you be for cutting taxes? You know, I, I don't think I'm your typical Democrat. I'm a Democrat that understands how to bring people together, how to be common sense, how to tackle big challenges, and deliver real results. So I guess the question then would be if, if corporate tax rate would go down, what tax rate would go down for the, for the people of Pennsylvania? Well, the, the issue is if you reduce corporate taxes, you can grow the economy. That's more money that a business can keep to hire more workers, to expand their product line, to expand their services. That's gonna be good for our workforce. At the same time, any effort I'm gonna make legislatively to reduce taxes is gonna be combined with efforts to invest more in workforce, a $15 minimum wage, at least, to make sure that we're investing in apprenticeship programs. Look, for example, we need more welders, we need more plumbers, we need more electricians. If you go through an apprenticeship program here in Pennsylvania, you're gonna make 30% more in wages over the course of your lifetime. So we need to invest both in workforce and in cutting taxes for businesses at the same time to grow our economy. I think transitions well into education because you talked about growing that education yep. for both technical skills, things like that. Uh, I wanna ask you about school choice because it seems you might actually be pro school choice. So can you clarify how far? Because Mastriano would say that he wants full open school choice, put right, the well, funding into students. Is that kind of where yeah. you're at as well? well let, let's look at the facts. First off, sure. Doug Mastriano has said he wants to eliminate the property tax. And that sounds great, right? Except if you eliminate the property tax, you're cutting 
half of the funding from our public schools. We're gonna have to shutter public schools. We are not going to close down our public schools. What he's proposing is unbelievably dangerous. And it's been rejected by Republicans and Democrats alike because it's just completely bonkers. What I wanna do is invest more in public education and drive new dollars out to school districts that have been chronically underfunded, like in our rural and our urban districts. And then I wanna make sure that parents are empowered to put their kids into the best possible position to succeed. And if that means a parent putting their kid in a charter school, they should be able to do that. I wanna empower parents to put their kids in a position to succeed, not to undermine our public schools, but to add to them. This should not be a conversation, public education, that's either or. Either you're for public schools or you're for choice. No, it's both and. I'm for both public schools and creating choice and opportunity for parents. But some of your supporters, like the PSEA, would, would contend that any type of transition to going to supporting charter school or school choice would hurt public schools. Well, because that's the old dynamic. What I want to do is invest more in public schools, make sure that schools have been chronically underfunded, including some of the schools in this region, get the resources they need, and empower parents to put themselves in the best possible position to succeed. What about regulating charter schools? That would be one of their concerns. Is that uh, some people, especially the PSEA, feel like there's not a lot, enough regulation in charter schools for Well, standards. obviously we need to make sure our kids are in an environment that is safe, that is healthy, and where they can learn effectively. And so you have to have regulation, whether it's a charter school, brick and mortar or cyber, or it's a traditional public school, of course. So would you support the Lifeline scholarships as presented currently, or would it be something different? I, I've said I'm open to that idea, and we need to make sure that we are investing in creating opportunities for, for our children. Let's transition to a, to a big topic here that uh, your campaign has run on is the issue of abortion. Obviously it's important now that it's been turned over basically to the states. This governor's race could determine the future of abortion. Will, will determine. The future of abortion in, Pen in Pennsylvania. So we've been asking Republicans where they stand specifically on abortion. So I want to turn that to a Democratic Absolutely. candidate. Where specifically do you stand? Is there a week limit for abortion? Is there a, a term limit for abortion? Where do you stand? On Absolutely this? fair question. Let me answer it directly. Sure. I'm for Pennsylvania law. Pennsylvania law says that a woman can have an abortion up to and through 24 weeks and post 24 weeks if her life or health is at risk. That's what I'm for. Let me tell you what my opponent is for. He is for the most extreme, dangerous ban in America. He has said he wants to ban all abortion with no exception, not for rape or incest or to save the life of the woman. And he wants to go a step further, we just learned a couple weeks ago, he wants to charge women with murder who have that life-saving health care procedure. Listen, my view is it's a woman's right to make that choice, free from political interference. Whatever choice she makes, it's not Doug Mastriano's choice. And what he is posing is a dangerous threat to women across Pennsylvania. I trust the women of Pennsylvania to make decisions over their own bodies. Do you feel if elected governor, you'd be faced with a, the op, like having to veto a bill because of the Without way that the legislature question. This, this legislature has routinely put bans on the desk of the next governor, uh, of, the, of the current governor. The next governor will have to decide if they're gonna sign that ban, my opponent will, or if they're gonna veto it, and I certainly will. I will veto that bill, protect Pennsylvania law, and trust the women of Pennsylvania to make decisions over their own bodies. Let's transition now to uh, the, the power of the governor, because we talked about uh, the veto power. When you were talking in Bedford, you talked about how important that is and the way that Pennsylvania is set up with the legislature, that a Democratic governor has the power to veto. How important is it to also be able to sign legislation, to work with the legislature? Because we can talk about the balance of power, being able to veto, but I think the people of Pennsylvania want to see things signed to better the people oh, of Pennsylvania. Without that, you're a thousand percent right. And I think the context for that conversation about vetoing is, I'm going to veto a bill that bans a woman's right to choose. I'm going to veto a bill that makes this a right to work state, as my opponent wants to do, which would, in effect, cancel out organized labor, cancel out unions. I'm not going to let that happen. Um, but I also understand it's the role of the governor to bring Democrats and Republicans together to get things done. And that's what I've done throughout my career. You know, I begin the conversation recognizing that even if you didn't vote for me, I'm going to be a governor for you, that I have a responsibility to all 13 million Pennsylvanians and a responsibility to work with Republicans and Democrats alike to get those things done. I approach the conversation with a Republican not believing that every idea they have is bad. 
And I'm going to encourage them to think that not every idea a Democrat has is bad. And by, by creating that new dynamic in Harrisburg, we can actually find some common ground. And look, the things I'm running on, investing in public education, hiring 2,000 more police officers, cutting business taxes, investing in workforce, these are hardly partisan ideas. These are things that enjoy Republican and Democratic support, and I'm going to be a governor that can bring people together to get these things done. You talked about increasing uh, funding and, and, and opportunities for police officers to get hired, more police officers on the streets. One of the main criticisms that the Mastriano campaign has put out is the crime rise in Philadelphia. Here in Johnstown, we had one of the deadliest starts to a year that yeah. they've ever had. As Attorney General, does that some of that responsibility go to you? Well, first and foremost, the level of violence that we see in Johnstown, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Reading, Hazleton, communities in between, it's unacceptable. But let's examine both of our records. When my opponent was confronted by law enforcement on January the 6th as he was part of the violent mob storming up to the Capitol, he pushed law enforcement aside and kept marching. He has no respect for law enforcement. That's why local law enforcement, fraternal orders of police, the State Troopers Association, They've all endorsed and backed me in this campaign. Prosecutors from both parties endorsed and backed me in this campaign, and they've soundly rejected him because he's a threat to law and order. As Attorney General, I've arrested over 8,200 drug dealers here in Cambria County and across Pennsylvania. We've arrested 500 gun traffickers, 500 child predators. I've put 100 corrupt public officials either behind bar or charge them behind bars or charge them, Republicans and Democrats alike. I won't take a back seat to anyone on this, but I will tell you, people have a right to both be safe and feel safe in their communities. That's why I've been uh, making clear we want to hire 2,000 more police officers, why we need real accountability um, in law enforcement, from law enforcement in our communities where people are um, using guns to wreak havoc on our neighborhoods, where they're peddling poisons to our children. We need to have a strong law enforcement response, and we also need to make investments that drive down violence in our communities. My opponent has been rejected by law enforcement leaders. I've been endorsed by them across the board. But do you think any, anything in your position as attorney general could have prevented some of this crime rise here in the state? We recognize, of course, that local police and local district attorneys have primary jurisdiction in communities. But take a look at what we've done in Cambria County, arresting hundreds of drug dealers, partnering with local law enforcement to do this, and then when we prosecute these cases, getting stiff sentences for those who break the law. I think we need more of that across Pennsylvania, not less. Let's talk energy real quick. Um, Republicans say that the way to get the economy going in Pennsylvania is to unlock the red tape around production, uh, energy production here in this state. This is an area, the 10 counties that we serve, were energy production areas, whether it was coal or even uh, natural gas. Uh, people would be concerned from a Democratic governor that, that wouldn't be, we wouldn't be able to get that access, that resources, and, and to create jobs in that industry. What's your plan when it comes to energy and potentially opening up those jobs? Well, people aren't concerned. They've embraced my vision for energy. In fact, I stood on this spot when I launched this campaign and said, I'm done with the false choice between the dignity of work and environmental justice. We can protect jobs and protect our planet. I stood on this spot and said, I'll be an all of the above energy governor, protecting the energy jobs of today and creating thousands of green energy jobs tomorrow. I think Republicans and Democrats alike have gotten this wrong in Harrisburg. They view this as an either or, it's not. We need to embrace our position here in Pennsylvania as an energy powerhouse for the nation. And I'll be a governor that leads the way on that. And if you look at the people who are working day in and day out in the energy sector, the boiler makers, for example, who, by the way, endorsed Donald Trump and other Republican candidates in the past, they've endorsed me in this campaign because they understand I'm the one that will protect their energy jobs today and create more opportunities tomorrow. And you, you kind of, you know, with a lot of your answers today, have, have talked about how you've strayed away from the extremes of both parties. Do you think that you might be a different candidate than what the future of the Democratic Party has been so far? You know, I, I think that's your job to maybe answer that question. I mean that totally respectfully. Uh, I'm running a campaign to be a governor for all Pennsylvanians, to try and bring people together, to make sure that we're able to focus on the needs of Johnstown, just like we're able to focus on the needs of Pittsburgh, and not sacrifice one for the other. I think our politics for too long have been this zero-sum game. If we help that family in Pittsburgh, someone's got to lose out here in Johnstown. That's the wrong attitude. If we help a Republican, a Democrat has to lose out. The wrong attitude. 
we have got to come together and recognize that we can solve these challenges together, that we can get rid of the extreme ideology and rhetoric and instead focus on finding common ground and solving problems. That's the kind of governor I want to be. And then finally, you've been going across the state here talking to many people. I've brought up several issues that, you know, we think people think are important. Yeah. But what have you heard from the actual people that have said, hey, you know, you might be talking about X, but we really are concerned about yeah. Z. What you have know, you heard? I actually think you've touched on most of the issues I hear about. What I'm struck by is, as I travel through all 67 counties is um, rural, urban, suburban, um, most people bring up the same four basic things. They want a really good quality education for their kids. They want safety and security in their communities. They want an economy that's growing, that's lifting people up. And fourth, they want to make sure their freedoms are protected. The freedom to marry who they love, the freedom to be able to make decisions over their own body, the freedom to vote, something they know is at risk if Doug Mastriano becomes um, our governor. And so those are the issues I hear about routinely, no matter what communities I'm in. Mr. Shapiro, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.